Welcome to another edition of How to Fix It Yourself with Dave and Dave. So today we're back on the Pathfinder, which we've done uh, different repairs on this one before. Today we're going to deal with something that comes up as cars get older. Now this is a 2001 Pathfinder. It's got 207,000 miles on it. I've kept it in good condition, so I expect to get quite a few more miles on it. But parts begin to get to be a problem and being able to find parts. So one of the things that tend to go once in a while on these cars is your electrical switches. Now, if you take it to a repair shop or something like that, they'll tell you you have to replace the entire switch. Well, you may not be able to get it and you may find yourself down at a uh, recycle yard or a junk yard, depending upon your age, what you call it to get a used one that may or may not give you any additional benefits because you don't know because it's all electrical. Well there is a way to refurbish these and that's what we're going to talk about today. And so for very little money but just some labor you can go in and make these work. Now I do have a problem with this one switch here which controls this back window and that is is that it'll go down but it goes down roughly and I can't get it to go back up using this switch. So I always have to go in and get the switch that's on the door to get it to go back up again. And of course if you're going down the freeway that's a little bit of an awkward reach to make it do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this switch out and I'm going to show you how to recondition the contact so that we can make this work right. And this works on most any car you run into. I think on some of our previous videos, we've talked about the importance of spraying down your electrical contacts. So this is another episode where we'll show you about that. But this is gonna be a little different, gonna take a little different tack to spray these contacts. In order to uh, service this, it's not difficult. You do not have to pull the door panel off. Now one comment, in general, when you do electrical work on your car, you should disconnect the battery by pulling the negative uh, terminal. This, we don't need to do that, and I'm not going to do that. That way we can test the different uh, parts as we go. So this just has some clips. Need to get a uh, uh, plastic tool that doesn't mar things underneath and just start working on it. You'll see it pops loose. And So it, it just pops out of there. You just need to be careful that you don't break anything, any of the clips. And now you have the uh, assembly back here. So these are the spring clips and you can see that they're made to be able to come out. So now we're going to take and remove the two harnesses. There's, if I can get it around this way, you can see for this one there's a little uh, pressure uh, right there. I usually can get it with my thumb, but sometimes you want a little screwdriver. This one here, it's down in there a little bit deeper, so I'm going to take and use uh, my tool to put a little pressure on the corner there so that we can start getting this one worked out of there. They uh, do make these snug and tight, so just have to wiggle it to get it out. So this is the assembly we're going to uh, work on here a little bit and we'll show you how to do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take out these three screws to completely separate it, which you need to do if you're going to entirely replace it. We actually don't need to do that uh, because we're going to just pry these clips out a little bit and pull this center section out. So if you're going to replace it, you need to remove those three screws. I think we're going to just go ahead and leave it in and we're going to go ahead and just pull this apart. So once you get it out of the car, the easiest way to take the center part out of the casing here, the black casing, is I find using paper, uh, toothpicks, excuse me, and you know, I've, you've seen some of my other videos. Uh, I, I have a real thing for toothpicks, they're very, very uh, useful. Just stick the toothpicks down by the clips because there's these uh, four clips that need to come loose. 
So just uh, put the toothpicks down in by the by the clips, and that way they're all loose, and it's easy to now pry your uh, center section out. So you just take and uh, pull it out, and it comes right out really easily, and you haven't broken any clips or anything. So once you get it out, now what you have here is you have a series of switches that are in each of these locations. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but right down in here, there's little slots where you can get some cleaner down into them. And it takes a little while, but that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take and uh, spray the heck out of the cleaners, or, or spray the heck with the cleaner into those slots. And we're gonna just go ahead and get it all in there. You notice we're being very liberal with the cleaner. You wanna get it down into those slots. And then you wanna go ahead and uh, run the actuators back and forth so as it, it cleans them. Oops that out of there you know so it gets some cleaning action going and you'll notice on these uh, back ones here on the uh, windows that there's two of them down there so you have a bottom one and a top one just run your toothpick on those get a little activity going on each of those I'd go ahead and spray it down again All right, so once you do that, uh, let it sit for a little bit to let the uh, cleaner work. And uh, so we'll come back here in uh, 10 minutes and uh, we'll cle finish cleaning it up. All right, now that we've let it sit for a little bit, we wanna go ahead and get the, uh, um, any excess fluid out of it. So you wanna kind of shake it and kind of get the excess fluid out. Uh, a lot of it will have evaporated, this stuff evaporates, but you can always help it out with a little can of air. You want to use electronic air like you use on your computers and that. So just go ahead and kind of blow things off, get it cleaned up. And you don't have to get it perfectly clean uh, or all of the uh, cleaner off of there because the uh, cleaner is electrically inert. You may want to go ahead and run the switches one more time just to kind of make sure you've got everything. And on these switches uh, here, these four switches, you want to make sure that you have them centered when you put it back in so as that, it, uh, so as that they line up with the different uh, actuators. The back ones here are spring-loaded, so they're going to be in uh, the right spot. These others, you just want to make sure that you get them in the correct spot. So just center them so that they'll slide back in. So after that, uh, and of course earlier we sprayed these, all these contacts down too. So we're going to just go ahead and slide it back in. And it just pops right back in. Make sure you run all the actuators again with the actual switches. All right, so now we've cleaned it and now we're just gonna put it back into the car. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and hook the electrical back up again. Let's start with the uh, large one. Just pop it in nice and securely. We'll do the, the next one. Pop that in nice and securely. And we'll rotate it around so we can drop it in. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and check it to make sure it works. So the window goes down and the window goes back up. 
Now, before you put it back together again or put it back into the door, be sure you uh, make sure it works. And uh, we have now, it may, you may have to operate it a couple of times to get it to uh, get all the lube in there and get it to work right. But uh, if you work it back and forth a little bit, you should be in good shape. All right, so we've tested the switch. It's still a little bit weak, but that's to be expected after 200,000 miles. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this back together again. Now, in looking at uh, switches online, you'll notice that uh, you're gonna be paying a couple hundred dollars if you try and replace this switch. And so that's why it's worth going ahead and uh, working with the contact cleaners to get it to uh, work as best as you can. So just pop it back in, and we hope that this, you found this instructive. This is a principle-based video, so it'll work on any kind of switches uh, that you have. Uh, any of your contacts that have issues, uh, go ahead and use the contact cleaner to help get those working better. Uh, be sure and subscribe, and we appreciate you using the links that we have in our video below. Have a good day.